Hey, if you're a timeshare owner and you want to learn how to rent your timeshare safely and profitably, then the next 30 minutes may just change your life. I'm Sue Oyuela, and so many timeshare owners have told me that they bought their timeshare specifically because the salesman said they could rent it out. But then after they purchased it, they were left wondering, okay, now how do I do that exactly, right? In fact, I was on a call with Yolanda the other day, and she said that what sold her on buying her timeshare was that the salesperson said she could rent it out when she wasn't using it. She said, the salesperson even said, don't worry, I'll show you how. But then, wouldn't you know it, as soon as the sale was completed, the salesperson just disappeared, right? And then later on, when Yolanda got home, she tried calling to get that person on the phone so they could follow through on their promise. But as you can imagine, they weren't available and they just never returned her calls, which of course left her feeling kind of frustrated and a little annoyed. And she told me that's when she went searching for answers on the internet, found my YouTube channel, and booked a call with me. And that call was so exciting because we went digging through her timeshare inventory together and we found her moneymaker. And what I've discovered after talking with so many timeshare owners over the years is that they think, oh, I'll just rent my timeshare and make money with it. But what they don't realize is that it's a little more complicated than it seems on the surface. And the problem is, because there are so many moving parts that if they don't understand what those parts are or how to use them effectively, then they end up losing more money or their points or both. And when I was talking to Yolanda, explaining what she needs to be aware of in order to protect her investment and rent her timeshare safely and profitably, She found it extremely helpful when I described it to her like a game. It gave her so much clarity, you know, one of those aha moments. So after talking with Yolanda, she inspired me to create this training to teach you how to play the timeshare rental game. So you can understand how it works, what all the moving parts are, where to find high paying guests, and how to protect your timeshare rental investment. Because when you learn how to rent your timeshare the right way, it can be the best investment you've ever made. In fact, my students are making 100% to 300% returns on every timeshare they rent. Some are doing one-offs, just renting it once per year, and others are renting their timeshares year-round. It just depends on what your goals are. And my goal is to create as many happy timeshare owners as possible, like Melissa. She went through my Timeshare Rental Academy program and said, from your program, I was able to book and host my first time ever. We made $719 for three nights. From then on, my husband and I were like, this lady knows her stuff. Thanks so much, Sue. Now when we think of our timeshares, we think, ka-ching instead of what have we done. And before I go on, I just want to quickly introduce myself. So for those of you who don't know me or if you're joining me for the first time today, my name is Sue Oyuela and I teach timeshare owners how to rent their timeshare safely and profitably on the internet. And I discovered how lucrative timeshare rentals could be back in 2012 when I tried helping my friend George. He was tired of paying dues every year for a timeshare he wasn't even using. And because I was running my own six-figure short-term rental business in Los Angeles at the time, I offered to see if we could rent it to at least make enough to cover his dues so it would stop being a financial drain. And I discovered that the timeshares like to make up a lot of rules that make it really difficult even to just use your own timeshare. Have you ever noticed that? I mean, when I tried to make a booking, they kept telling me, No, you can't book it, but if your dates are flexible, I'm sure we can find you something you'll like. And I got so tired of hearing no that I made it my mission to get to yes. (laughs) And I was determined to find a path through those rules. And after a couple of years of trial and error, I finally figured out the right questions to ask so I could rent it profitably on a consistent basis. And then I taught George how to do it too, so now he manages his own bookings and is consistently making triple what he pays in dues each year. That was the turning point when I knew I had to share what I'd learned to help my fellow timeshare owners figure out how to navigate their timeshares rules too. 
And along the way, I discovered that no two ownerships are alike, even in the same network. But the secret is knowing what questions to ask so you can find that profitable path through their rules. This is the common thread that works no matter what timeshare network you own or how you own it. So in today's training, I'm going to pass on to you, my friend, the knowledge you need to be able to rent your timeshare safely and profitably. I'm going to give you the questions to ask so you can navigate the rules and get to yes. And more importantly, I'll be sharing the rules with you of how to play the timeshare rental game so you can apply them to your unique situation. Okay, so I like to make learning fun, so let's look at this as if we're opening up a new game for the first time. It's called the timeshare rental game. Now here's the objective, to rent your timeshare for top dollar without losing what you've invested in it, okay? Now to do that, we begin by identifying what the playing pieces are, what the rules are, and how you win. Okay, so first, let's go over the playing pieces. First, there's the timeshare company itself. This is the one you have an owner number or a member number for. They're the main ones who make the rules, so we have to pay close attention to that. Then there's the specific timeshare resort that the guests are going to stay at. And of course, there are the guests who will rent your timeshare from you. And then last but not least, there's the website where you create a listing to attract those high paying guests. So I'm going to go into more detail on each one of those in just a minute, but before we move on, we need to get clear on one thing, and that's how you win. So let's do a little exercise. Let me ask you this. What does winning look like for you? Having your cake and eating it too? Getting to make some money by renting out your timeshare and then still being able to use it? Or did you have something else in mind? So this is an important exercise that we need to work through before we move on. So while you're thinking about it, let me give you an example. When I calculate how much I'm going to make on my timeshare rental, I usually have two numbers in mind. The first is my break-even point. This is the number I don't want to go below. <laughs> For example, if my dues are costing me $1,000 per year and I make $1,000 from renting it out, then I've broken even. And that's a win in my book because that means I'm basically getting my timeshare for free. Like Hong, for example. He just wanted to break even, so he went through my program and followed my system to get his first booking. And I want to give a huge shout out to Hong for trusting the process and not taking shortcuts. And with his first five night booking, he made $2,158.25. Well, he overshot his goal of breaking even, but he definitely made enough with that one booking to cover his dues. So he was satisfied and decided to use his timeshare for his own vacations for the rest of the year. But then there are those competitive timeshare owners like me who want to raise their rental rates as high as possible. In sales, the term is seeing how much the market will bear. And every year, I like to increase my rates by 20% just to see how much more people are willing to rent my timeshare for. And to date, I've been able to make a 300% return on my investment, which is nice because that allows me to cover my dues and put a little extra cash in my pocket. So for me, I'm competing against myself to see if I can make more than a 300% return. So how does that sound as far as defining what winning is for you? Somewhere between break even and 300% return on your investment or more? So I want you to go ahead and write that down. It's important to have a goal to shoot for so you'll be able to calculate your rental rates later on. So do that now, pause the video if you have to, and write down what winning looks like for you. And then when you come back, we'll discuss the rules of the game. All right, welcome back. Now that you have your target income fixed firmly in mind, how do we rent your timeshare to meet or beat that number? Well, first of all, we'll need to go back to each of the four playing pieces and identify the questions to ask, because the answers to these questions will then allow us to define the rules of the game based on your specific timeshare network. Because what I found is that the rules change whenever you have a different timeshare network or even a different program within their network. So by going through this exercise and finding the answers to these questions, you'll be able to design your own custom timeshare rental strategy. 
And I also want you to be aware that there are four phases to a timeshare rental cycle. Phase one is research. This is where you answer the questions to understand your timeshare's rules so you know what you have to work with. Then there's phase two, identify, where you'll identify who your ideal guest will be. Once you know that, then you move into phase three and create your listing on the internet. And then once your listing is live and you're open for business, then you move into phase four, manage, where you handle the bookings and get paid. So starting with the timeshare company itself, let's go over the questions you need to ask. Okay, so how do you make a reservation? Do you log into a website? If so, what's your login? Have you gone in to explore the resorts that you have to choose from? And have you gotten familiar with navigating their website? If not, I recommend that you do. Next. Or maybe there isn't a website and you have to call the reservation department and talk to a live person who does it for you. All right, make sure you get that number. And then when can you make a reservation? So the timeshare will have rules around how much you can use your timeshare and how far in advance you can make a reservation. So are you a fixed week owner? If so, then that's easy. Simply reserve that week with the timeshare and you're ready to rent it out. But that's not all. I found that after you've used your free week, the timeshare will often allow you to access even more time for an additional fee. And it's always good to ask because the truth is, you may actually have access to more time than you realize. And accessing this additional inventory will be the key to making even more money with your timeshare later on. Okay, so now are you a floating week owner? If so, then you can reserve any available week. <laughs> and finally, how far in advance can you make a reservation? So pay attention to their time limits because sometimes you can make a reservation up to 13 months in advance or sometimes just a few weeks in advance. Okay, so the next question to ask is, how do you cancel or change a reservation? Now this is the key to protecting your investment. So what you need to find out is how close to check-in can you cancel or change a reservation and still get your money or points back. So ideally, you would like it to be flexible <laughs> up until the day of check-in or at least three days before check-in. However, some timeshares may have a use it or lose it policy where they don't allow any changes at all. But if that's the case, sometimes the timeshare will give you an option to purchase cancellation protection insurance of some kind. And if so, I highly recommend that you get it because it's a fact of life that plans change and you need to protect yourself in case you don't get a booking. So hopefully, your timeshare will be on the more flexible end of the spectrum, which will make renting it much more profitable. Okay, so next. The timeshare will have rules about transferring your reservation to a guest. It's so important to understand what their guest policies are. So here are the questions you need to ask. First of all, is there a limit to the number of guests you can transfer your timeshare reservations to? Hopefully there aren't. <laughs> and does the timeshare require that you fill out their guest certificate form when you want to transfer the reservation to a guest? If so, how much does a guest certificate cost? And is there a limit to the number of guest certificates that you can use each year? And is there a different website that you need to log into if you will be renting to a guest? So these are very important details you need to pay attention to so you can be sure that you can follow the timeshare's guest policy when it comes time to transfer the reservation into your guest name. But I just want you to be aware that if the timeshare doesn't allow you to transfer a reservation to a guest at all, then I'm sorry to say that that is going to be a deal breaker because you simply won't be able to rent your timeshare to a guest without having to physically be there in person to check in at the resort every time. And I've seen it a couple of times with the smaller timeshare networks where they require that the owner be the one to check in and renting only works if you live nearby, say within 45 minutes of your timeshare resort. But what I found over the years is that as long as the timeshare allows you to transfer a reservation into the name of a guest, there are always ways to find a profitable path through their rules. Okay, so it's time for another exercise, all right? Now, 
because making money with your timeshare all depends on the timeshare's rules, here's your homework. Get a copy of your contract in writing because this is a key piece to understanding the rules of the game according to how the timeshare wants to play it. Now once you've done that, you've completed phase one, research, and you're ready for phase two. Okay, so let's move on to phase two, identify. Where we'll identify who your ideal guest will be. Now it's important to understand that our guests are who we serve. They are our customers. So be aware that when renting a timeshare, you are entering the wonderful world of hospitality. And what this means is that when you understand who your ideal guest will be and what their expectations are, you'll have the key to increasing your nightly rate and maximizing your income. So let's begin with the questions you'll need to ask in order to understand who your ideal guest will be so you could select the resort they would pay the most to stay at. So what will they be doing while they're in town? Who will they be traveling with? And what will make this a great experience for them so they can make memories that last a lifetime? Now, some expectations they may have could include having a great location, you know, somewhere close to where they're going. Uh, they may want easy parking. They'll definitely want it to be clean and probably safe and with the amenities that will enhance their experience. And they're definitely going to want to have it easy to book. And most importantly, they do not want surprises at check-in. Now, which means no extra fees to pay at check-in. And all of the amenities that they booked it for are going to be available and not down for routine maintenance, you know. And they expect to receive everything that they were promised in the listing. So you'll want to keep these questions handy because they will change based on which resort you book. So let's go on to identifying which resort you're going to select, okay? Now once you've established that the timeshare does allow you to transfer a reservation out of your name and into a guest name, then you have a rental friendly timeshare and we can move on to selecting the specific resort to rent from the timeshare's network of available properties that will surprise and delight your ideal guest. So if you have a fixed week at a specific resort, then simply choose that property. Voila. However, if you have floating weeks or points, you're going to be able to choose from all of the properties in their network, which can be a little overwhelming. So how do we narrow it down? Well, first we determine which location is in highest demand year round. So go into your timeshares website and when you're searching through your timeshares properties, sort the properties from highest to lowest demand. Next, we'll need to select the dates we want. So how do we decide which dates to choose? Well, it's easy. If you own a fixed week, simply choose those dates. However, if you own floating weeks or points, you'll be able to choose any dates from the available timeshare inventory. Again, a little overwhelming, right? So to narrow it down, we need to ask which dates will command the highest nightly rates? And the answer goes back again to what brings your ideal guest into town? If they're in town for a special event, then select the dates your guests are going to want most based on when that special event is. Now that you know what your ideal guest is coming into town for, as well as when and where they want to be, now you can answer the question, how many people are likely to be traveling together to the special event? And this is going to help you choose what size unit to book. But I want to caution you here because you may be tempted to book a presidential suite that holds up to 16 people and you've got dollar signs in your eyes thinking I'm going to get a thousand dollars a night for this place. But the likelihood of those 16 guests each inviting 10 of their closest friends is very high and you could probably imagine the phone call you'd be getting from the timeshare about their no parties policy, right? So to avoid problems, 
it's best to choose smaller units, you know, studios, one bedroom and two bedroom units that accommodate up to six to eight guests maximum. So this is the sweet spot because you could still get a really high ROI while reducing the risk of your guests taking advantage of your hospitality. Okay, so that being said, let's pause for another exercise before we go on. Let's put into action everything we've just discussed and selecting the resort, the dates, and unit size that will fit your high paying guest needs the best. Okay, so once you've done the research to identify the best resort and discovered that the dates are available, go ahead and lock in the reservation with the timeshare now. This is important because it will ensure that when a guest books with you, you'll be able to keep your promise that it is indeed available. Great, so congratulations, you've completed phase two. You've identified the resort, the dates, the unit size, and who your ideal guest is. So now you have everything you need to move on to phase three and create a listing on the internet to attract your high paying guest. Now, there are many details that go into creating a high converting listing, but the most important objective is to first get potential guests to see your listing. I call it putting yourself in the way of the money. In fact, there are many websites out there where you can create a listing to rent your timeshare. Some popular websites are Red Week and Tug2.net, which are pretty well known among timeshare owners. And there are also quite a few Facebook groups where owners rent directly to each other. And some folks even go as far as building their own website to advertise their timeshare for rent. But that's much harder than it needs to be, and I would not recommend doing that. But the problem with all of those is that only people who know where to look can find those listings, which means you're posting your listing in front of a very small audience, which makes the odds of getting a booking very slim because it's a numbers game, right? Does that make sense? But then there are the travel websites like VRBO, Airbnb, Expedia, Flipkey, Booking.com, TripAdvisor, Nine Flats, Wimdo, Pier Oh my gosh, I can go on. And this is where I have found the most success. And the great thing about these websites is that thousands of travelers are searching these sites every month looking for short-term rental accommodations, which makes them the perfect place to post your timeshare listing. So now you'll have a much better chance of finding and attracting your ideal guest. So you've definitely put yourself in the way of the money. And if you're wondering, yes, I've tried all of those websites. See, in the beginning, I didn't want to have all my eggs in one basket, so I decided to create a listing and post it on about 12 different websites. Yes, <laughs> the same listing on all of them. But what I found was that they may have looked similar on the surface, but once I got into the mechanics of creating a beautiful listing, collecting the payment, and communicating with the guests, I discovered that they were all very different in terms of the tools, the functionality, how effective or ineffective their marketing was, um, the services they provided, and how they protected me or didn't protect me. Like when I was renting rooms in my own home back in 2011, and two different people booked the same room for the same dates, and they both showed up at the same time disaster. Can you imagine how it felt to have to look these people in the eye and apologize for ruining their trip? It was just awful and I swore I would never use a travel website that didn't allow me to sync my calendars so I could avoid this painful double booking scenario from ever happening again. So it's the little things like that that you don't discover until you're deep in the weeds of using their platform and by then it's too late. But lucky for you, that's where my decade of experience comes in. I've already tried every possible website and angle for finding these high paying guests. And I've discovered what not to do from personal experience. Thank you very much. Yes, there were tantrums and tears and terrible experiences, but I wouldn't change a thing because after going through all of that, I'm able to help you today by giving you the huge benefit of all that experience and showing you the one best place to list your timeshare for rent so you can safely avoid the pitfalls and navigate your way to profits. So the best place to list your timeshare for rent, drum roll please, is on Airbnb. And here's why. First of all, Airbnb helps you keep more of the money you make simply by putting their money where their mouth is 
With Airbnb, there are no upfront fees for creating a listing, which means you can create unlimited free listings where other websites may charge hosting fees or membership fees with no guarantee that they'll get you a booking. But Airbnb only charges you when you get paid. I mean, what could be more fair? They don't get paid unless you get a booking? I love that. And you may be asking, well, how much do they charge? Well, Airbnb simply keeps 3% from every booking, which is an incredible deal based on everything they give you. So check this out. First and foremost, they're a payment processor. Now, I really love that because for me, it's really awkward collecting money directly from my guests. I don't know, it just changes the relationship and makes it a little uncomfortable. So Airbnb handles that as well as chasing any declined credit cards. So I know that when a reservation is confirmed, Airbnb has already verified that payment. What a relief. So there's no need for a merchant account for processing credit cards, which is great because some of those other websites leave that up to you to figure out. And then after hiring a merchant to process your payments, paying their setup fees and their transaction fees and taxes, they end up costing about 3% just by themselves anyways. But not only does Airbnb collect the money for you, they also automatically transfer it directly to your account 24 hours after the guest stay begins. I love that. And because Airbnb doesn't get paid unless you get a booking, they are highly motivated and they do an amazing job of marketing to the whole world. And not just that. Imagine if someone is searching on Airbnb for a place to stay, but then leaves without booking. Airbnb continues to track them and posts their Airbnb ads in front of them everywhere that potential guest goes on the internet. You've experienced that, right? They call it retargeting, and it's a way for businesses to stay top of mind for you, so you'll come back to them when you're ready. But then Airbnb goes even further by continuing to send them reminder emails to come back and keep looking for a place to stay. And if that potential guest happened to look at your listing specifically, Airbnb will even put a link for them to come back directly to it. So powerful. But then let's say you decided to rent your timeshare on your own website instead. You would have to invest in this type of omnipresent marketing, which would cost you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars per year. Well, my advice? Well, because Airbnb is a $4.8 billion company and they have a huge marketing budget to invest in algorithms, machine learning, and AI to run the stuff behind the scenes, don't even try to compete against them. Just use their website to create as many free listings as you want and let them do the marketing for you. Fair enough? Great. So now let's talk about how Airbnb protects you. So first of all, Airbnb covers you with three types of insurance on every booking automatically included. There are no applications to fill out, no fees or deductibles to pay. They've simply got your back. Okay, next, let's talk about their amazing review system. See, at the end of every stay, the guest and the host leave a review for each other. It's a tamper-proof system, so you can trust the reviews that you see on Airbnb. Unlike other travel websites where you can import the reviews that aren't verified, which just undermines the integrity of the system. And the way Airbnb handles the reviews is brilliant. It's a blind review system where neither the host nor the guest can see the other's review until they're both posted. Now, this is the secret sauce that allows you to rent your timeshare safely and confidently on Airbnb because it incentivizes both parties to be on their best behavior. See, Airbnb's review system allows hosts and guests to build what I call reputation capital because if guests get a bad reputation, future hosts won't accept their bookings. And if hosts get a bad reputation, future guests will book with someone else, someone more reliable. And of course, it works the other way as well. When a host consistently gets good reviews and hits other metrics, not only will guests choose to book with them over other hosts, but Airbnb will also promote them to a super host. And that results in even more trust, more bookings, more money, and other privileges. So the review system is really quite powerful. Okay. 
So let's talk about how Airbnb helps you attract those high paying guests. Now, I believe that Airbnb is the best place to post your timeshare listing and put yourself in the way of the money for four main reasons. First of all, imagine that you're your ideal guest for a moment. If you're looking for a place to stay, what website are you going to check first? Well, I would argue that Airbnb will be one of the first websites that comes to mind. Why? Because Airbnb has become a household word, you know, right up there with Kleenex and Xerox. Like, I'm sure you've probably heard somebody say, I'm just going to get an Airbnb for the weekend, right? It's the first place most people start their search when they're looking for a short-term rental. But what if they've never heard of Airbnb and they simply start their search on a search engine like Google or Yahoo or Bing, for example? Well, the cool thing is that Airbnb's listings come up in search engine results too, which means if someone's never heard of Airbnb, they can still find your listing. To me, that's incredibly powerful. And another reason people look for a place to stay on Airbnb is to find a home away from home. What that means is they want something more than just a hotel room. They want something with a fully stocked kitchen and maybe a washer and dryer in the unit. Which is why Airbnb is the perfect place to list a timeshare because when you rent a timeshare, it comes with a kitchen and other resort amenities, which definitely deliver the experience the guests are looking for. And another perception that many travelers have is that they believe they can get a better deal if they book on Airbnb instead of a hotel. In fact, my cousin, she booked a five bedroom, four bath house in Costa Rica overlooking a private surfing beach where 10 of my family members stayed for a week of surfing and fishing and barbecuing to their heart's content. And she paid less than $1,000 for the whole week. I mean, I hear stories like this all the time and I'm sure you have too. Okay, so let's recap. Because of awareness, SEO, price and perception, People already know, like, and trust Airbnb, and that's why it's the best place to find your ideal guests. Okay, so let's talk about how Airbnb frees you up to make money with your timeshare from anywhere. So Airbnb has so many robust features that other websites just don't have. And when you use them to your advantage, you can manage a timeshare rental business from the phone in your pocket because the Airbnb app allows you to respond to guests quickly with stored templates. You can make changes on the fly without having to go back to your computer. And you could set up automations to reduce the time it takes to manage your system to less than 30 minutes a year. And it may sound silly, but one of my favorite things about the app is their unique notification sound that goes bling every time I get a message from a guest or a reservation. I mean, before I ever learned how to rent timeshares, I was an expert at using Airbnb to rent rooms in my own house, as well as for doing some rental arbitrage, you know, renting other people's property. And I even used it to run a vacation rental management business in the greater Los Angeles area. In fact, Airbnb was the tool that enabled me to quit my full-time J-O-B, you know, just over broke, and retire my husband by building a six-figure short-term rental business. And even though I've hosted over 2,000 guests over the years, I gotta tell you, my heart still races every time I hear that unique ka sound that the Airbnb app makes. Because when I hear it, I say to myself, you know, look, I'm making money from the mall, the beach, you know, while I'm picking up the kids from school, you know, wherever I am at the time. And knowing that I'm free to work from anywhere just really makes me happy. So the Airbnb app makes it possible for timeshare owners to build and scale a timeshare rental system. And that's what I want for you. So that's how to play the timeshare rental game. So let's go over what we've learned. Now you know the right questions to ask to create your timeshare rental strategy. Now you know how to avoid risk by booking with the timeshare first. And now you know how to put yourself in the way of the money and attract those high paying guests by posting your listing on Airbnb. Terrific. And I know that you can take this information that I've shared with you today and you can go out and use it to make money with your timeshare. It's important to me that you know how to do it the right way so you can protect your investment. In fact, I'd like to thank you for staying until the end because you're helping me achieve my mission of teaching 100,000 timeshare owners how to rent their timeshare the right way so they can finally enjoy using their timeshare for both fun and profit. And remember how I told you about Yolanda at the beginning and how she inspired me to create this training? Well, 
Another thing that came up in our conversation was when she said, after the timeshare salesman wouldn't return my calls, I started searching everywhere trying to find someone who would answer my questions, which inspired me to set up my timeshare rental chat hotline. So I've set it up specifically to help timeshare owners who have questions about renting their timeshare. So if you want to, click the link below in the description to start a conversation with a timeshare rental expert now. Just go to www.timesharegoldmine.com slash chat hotline. And if you'd like more help with learning how to rent your timeshare, just let the operator know. Once they confirm that you own a rental-friendly timeshare, they can put you on my calendar for a free fast start call. Well, thank you so much again for being here. This is Sue Oyuela wishing you all the best and timeshare rental success. Bye for now.